We're talking with Dr. Steve Ryder, board certified neurologist, and we're talking about strokes. Steve, welcome to the Dr. Bob Show. Thanks for having me. Well, what is a stroke? A stroke is a sudden loss of function. Um, people in the old time days used to think God would strike you down or, or strike you with an affliction and you'd have a deficit or a loss of function. So it's a loss of vision, loss of strength, loss of sensation, loss of balance, or a sudden very severe headache, sometimes a thunderclap headache. Like a banger. A banger of a headache. Yeah. Now, are there different types of strokes? There are different types of strokes. There are strokes where you don't get enough blood flow to your brain. We call them ischemic strokes. Or there are strokes where a blood vessel in your head inside your head or outside of your head ruptures called a hemorrhagic stroke. Wow, it sounds like that second one, the hemorrhagic stroke would be worse. Is either one worse than another? Um, they're both bad for different reasons. I wouldn't want to pick either one of them to be honest with you. Yeah, so they both can be devastating. Both can be devastating. Uh, what are the symptoms that somebody has when they first have a stroke and little minor symptoms? Are there ever minor symptoms? There are minor symptoms. It's typically a sudden loss of function, and sometimes that can be a sudden loss of vision, which in and of itself may not be particularly major or worrisome on the outset, but can Blind? lead to other problems. Blind or losing vision in one part of your eye. Sometimes you just notice your arm feels a little bit numb, or your whole side of your body feels a little bit numb. Not something that would make you go to the hospital right now, but probably should because it's a concerning thing that something worse may happen. So visual changes, eye changes, it can be a little bit of the vision that's changed mm -hmm. or weakness in an extremity. How about speech? speech? Speech can be a problem. Sometimes speech getting slurred or even hard time understanding or producing speech. So maybe miss some words or make some mistakes when talking. Why is it important that we recognize these symptoms early? If I was talking to you or sort of started having slurred speech and you said, oh my goodness, Dr. Bob is ready to have a stroke, why would it be important for you to recognize it quickly? It's very important because the treatments that we have to help stop problems from stroke, to make people better, are very time dependent. Um, there's a clot busting medication called TPA we can give people who have the strokes called the ischemic strokes that may help decrease their disability or their problems from the stroke down the line and sometimes can make people better in the long term. So if anybody has any symptoms of a stroke at any time you give them TPA or you got to figure out what kind of stroke it is? You got to figure out what kind of stroke it is first. So, so if it's a hemorrhagic stroke that might cause some problems, a clot buster, because it would keep everything from clotting back. Correct. So how do you how do you tell the difference? The first way to tell the difference, the easiest way, is to get a CAT scan or a CT scan of the head. What that is is it's a fancy X-ray of your brain, and on that X-ray, blood shows up really bright. And typically, if you've had an ischemic stroke, your head or a stroke with no blood flow in your brain, your CT scan looks normal. If you've had a hemorrhagic stroke, you're going to see a lot of really dark, high density. Uh, blood or brightness on the head CT that tells you not to give TPA. So if you've got an ischemic stroke, you want to give TPA because that will take care of the clot that makes no blood supply. Are there any tests that, that you can look at that says, ah, see, there's no blood supply to that part of the brain? There are. There's um, MRI testing. There are some MRI perfusion scans and also um, you can do a CT angiogram or an MR angiogram. Sometimes in the initial workup of a stroke though, when someone has a clinical deficit, when they've got a big problem you can tell on examination, like they've got weakness or numbness or problems talking and their CT scan of their head shows no blood, you assume that the cause of that is lack of blood flow to one part of your brain and you go ahead and give the, the medication, the TPA, because waiting any longer would cause potentially more damage, so you want to do it faster. So sometimes we don't do the MR perfusion scans or the CT angiograms if we have a pretty good clinical suspicion. So there's a real critical time element here. What is the time element if I'm not with you, the doctor, if I'm at home and somebody realizes that and I call 911, how much time do I have to get the TPA? That's a good question. It used to be up to three hours, but they've recently looked at the guidelines and looked at how people have done with the TPA medication and found they could extend the window up to four and a half hours. Ah, but if I got there in 90 minutes, it'd be better than three hours. Correct, 90 minutes is better than three hours. They, there's an there's a old phrase they used to use called time is brain. And they, I think they used to use it for heart attacks too, which was time was you know, heart, but yeah. they also use time is brain now for stroke treatments. So. That means 
if you, the quicker you get that blood supply back to the brain, the better you're going to recover. That's correct. Um, or that's the assumption. That's yeah, and that's, that's what we hope is, right. that's what is, we hope. is going to happen. Uh, what is some of the, um, uh, when the, you give the clot buster, mm -hmm. what does it actually do? What it does is it can go through and dissolve the blood clot in the blood vessel. It, everybody has a little bit of that clot busting um, enzyme in their mouth at times. It helps dissolve blood clots and so what they've done is they've made some in a lab and they administer it through your vein and it goes up and it can help dissolve the blood clot and hopefully reestablish blood flow to the area of brain that's not getting good blood flow. If you have a patient coming in, comes in and they've had an obvious stroke and you give them the TPA, the clot buster, what's the quickest you've ever seen somebody's function return? Um, for the most part, people don't have a Lazarus-like effect, unfortunately. What, hap what we think happens is that there's an immediate area of damage from the initial lack of blood flow. Unfortunately, sometimes as little as six minutes without blood flow causes permanent brain injury. Now, what we do find is that when you open up the blood clot, there's areas around that core that dies off that responds better and has a better outcome. And the more of that you save, the better the prognosis. Most people get better with their strokes, but the people who get TPA, will get 30% better than those who don't get it. So about a third better than those who haven't gotten it about three months during, after their stroke. The brain, do these cells that have died, do they restore themselves around that area or part of it's dead and new, and new synapses come in there? Um, some of it we think people either relearn. There are some ideas that you can relearn and reattach and reconnect synapses. There's some idea that maybe you might regrow some neurons, but that's still a little controversial. For the most part, we say you don't regrow them, you just kind of work around them. The other thing is, for some types of strokes, the neurons themselves stay alive and are able to kind of spread out with collateralization and do better. Let's talk about transient ischemic attacks. Mm -hmm. That's called a TIA. What does it mean? That is a uh, warning sign. It means that at some point, something has blocked the blood flow to your brain, and then your body's either moved the blockage along, the clot along, or it's fallen out of the way and your blood supply has been restored. Is it almost, could you have the blood vessels go into such bad spasm uh, that it could do that and not have a blood clot and not really block off, well you'd be blocking off blood supply. Yeah. Can you have a bad spasm? You could, that's less common than having something embolic happen. Um, the spasms happen usually in younger people, uh, but typically it's uh, something that blocks it. So there's actually some debris, some clot that blocks it up. So does, does the studies that you do usually show what it is? Do you have to get a angiogram? What's an angiogram? An angiogram is a look at the blood vessels. Um, we typically look for problems with either the pump, the passages, or the passengers when we're evaluating the okay. TIAs. Let's go through that again. So okay. for value, the pump, the pump, the passenger, passages. and the passageway. Right. Uh, tell me, the pump, what, what does the pump have to do? What's the pump? The pump is the heart. Oh, and you look yeah. for problems as far as heart rhythm problems like atrial fibrillation, or sometimes some people have a passageway between the right side and the left side of their heart that can sometimes allow errant blood clots or things from their veins get into their arteries and then go up to the brain from there. Now normally if we've got a blood clot in the leg, it ends up in the lung. But if there's a shunt in the heart, if it goes from one side to the other, sneaks through, mm -hmm. uh, then it can go to, the, can brain. Go to the brain. Now atrial fibrillation, uh, how does that cause a stroke? Because that's very important. It's my, how, how frequent are strokes due to atrial fibrillation? It's fairly frequent and some of the numbers have said about one in four. Um, people have uh, strokes due to that. It's hard to know entirely just because of the different strokes that we see, and sometimes it varies by region, but that's, I'd say, a pretty gross clinical estimate based so, on what I see. So why do they get a stroke if the heart's doing something wrong? The atrium, the, one of the entranceways to the, from blood from the lungs to the heart can fibrillate and kind of move like this, and blood's like epoxy. Unless you kind of mix it all the time, it'll harden up, and so it can harden on the edges of the atrium, and if your heart goes in and out of atrial fibrillation, when that, that vessel's fibrillating, the blood collects there, and then when that heart starts beating strong again, it can actually push that clot down into the ventricle and launch it up into the brain. Oh, is that, is that a permanent stroke type thing there in that um, case too? It can be. Sometimes you can have a TIA with atrial fibrillation. The clot's soft and your body breaks it up and it moves along. Sometimes it comes in and causes a deficit, then it causes it in a small part of your head, just maybe takes out third grade English. So that's the pump. Yep, that's the pump. And then the passageway, what's that? That's the blood vessels in your neck or in your head. Okay, and what kind of problems do they cause? Do they get 
what? You can get narrowing in the arteries in your neck, so you can have to have a carotid endarterectomy to open those up if they find you got some clot or some plaque, cholesterol plaque in there holding up the blood supply. You have to open it up and take out that clot. That's mm -hmm. the endarterectomy. That's the endarterectomy. That's there. Yep. So you have to open up the flow, the passageway. Uh -huh. how, how can you help the inside of the blood vessels in the brain? With the inside blood vessels in the brain, sometimes you can actually go in and do procedures to dilate the vessels, but more commonly it's focused on getting medicines to, number one, decrease the risk of having strokes, like keeping platelets from sticking together, like your aspirin, to also keep your blood pressure down. Blood pressure being the number one cause of stroke. High blood pressure, number one risk factor for stroke if your blood pressure is high. Of, blood, of risk factors you can treat. You've got so we tell people every time they go to the doctor, be sure you get your blood pressure. Mm -hmm. A lot of times people say, the only time my blood pressure is high is when I'm at the doctor's office. And I tell them, that's the only time you get your blood pressure <laughs> taken. So yep. we should pay attention to our blood pressure so we won't get a stroke. Yeah, yep. and so it's very important. So that's the passage way. Uh, what's the passenger? The passengers are the blood vessels, the, sorry, the blood cells themselves. So How do they cause stroke? Some people can have, a, have um, things they're born with that makes their blood clot too easily. We call them hypercoagulable states. Uh, a certain sector of people have those more common? Uh-huh. Some people do. Um, uh, young people, old people? Young people typically have strokes due to the hypercoagulable states more than other okay. reasons. So. so if somebody has got the hypercoagulable passenger mm -hmm. state, uh, that's usually due to the, the blood vessels in young people. The blood vessels, yeah, the blood cells in young people. They do stick you see together. strokes in young people? We do, unfortunately, we do see strokes in young people. Uh, and that's usually a tip off that it's something unusual? Uh -huh. Usually a tip off. Uh, when somebody has a stroke, uh, that's something we all dread. Nobody wants to ha have a stroke and be a vegetable and be in a nursing home and be non-functional. Right. What is rehabilitation like? How effective is it? It's very effective. Um, strokes typically look the worst after they first happen. People usually make some degree of recovery in the first days. Now there's always exceptions to that and there's always the bad stroke that really ends people's lives or makes them, gives them really severe permanent debility. But almost everybody gets better with rehabilitation, whether they get some function back or whether they learn to deal with their deficit to work around it or whether their family gets to help to take care of, take care of them better. Everybody gets better with rehabilitation. Uh, are there centers of rehabilitation that maybe are better? Should I go to Mayo Clinic or are there usually good rehabs locally? There's good rehabs locally. So we've got two very good rehabilitation centers locally just in the downtown area. And so they do Can a good you reestablish speech, reestablish motion, reestablish eyesight sometimes yep. with but rehab? More often than not, you get some improvement and rehab really helps that along and gets you further on your way. And then from keeping to get a second stroke, what's the key issues? The key issues are doing things to decrease your stroke risk factors, like we talked about the blood pressure, making sure your cholesterol is down low enough, making sure that you keep on your medicines to keep your platelets from sticking together. If you've had heart disease or a previous stroke, also keeping track of your weight, diabetes. Unfortunately, you can't change some of the bigger factors like your family history or your sex, at least yeah. not in the way to affect or your age. stroke risk or age. Yeah, if you get old, you get old. Yep. Uh, Steve Ryder, wonderful teacher. Thank you so much for coming to the Dr. Bob Show and talking about strokes and the things that we can do. I really loved what you said. Everybody improves, or almost everybody, right. in rehab. And knowing the signs and symptoms of a stroke early may really save you brain. Very important. Very uh, important. Uh, thank you. You've taught me a great deal, and I appreciate your coming. Thanks for having me. It's my pleasure. Take care. Uh, if you have symptoms or know somebody has symptoms while you're talking with them, immediately call 911. Get to the emergency room. You may need that clot buster. And now you'll want to stay tuned. We're going to be talking about that old nemesis allergies. Is there a good treatment for that? And enlarged the lymph nodes. Could it be cancer? Or is it just a sign that will help your doctor? You'll want to stay tuned.